What's going on guys, Pixelated here, back at it again with another review. Today we are looking at the Yeezy 350 Boost V2 in the Zebra colorway. As we all know, the Zebra restock happened just this past weekend, and boy what a restock it was. If you didn't hear the news, stock was a plenty. Many people who don't normally cop finally took Ws, some even copped more than they could handle. A couple smart tech savvy kids hacked and destroyed the confirmed app in China, I think it was China, and copped 80 pairs. Unfortunately, it didn't end well for them walking out of the store with that many pairs. It was a blessed day for many, but still a sad day for a lot. Of course, with all these Ws, there are still bound to be else and quite a few people I know still were not able to secure a pair now I'm sad to hear that it has to be that way but it's an unfortunate part of the game you win some you lose some I must say I was pretty close to that side of the coin and I definitely was on that side of the coin on the first drop and it's not a good feeling but you can only do so much in a certain amount of time without stealing all of the earth's resources just to make more sneakers and I say this without a doubt for many the appeal of owning certain sneakers is just how limited they are even for me sometimes so this shouldn't be the biggest L in your books by far, especially since now the resale price is so low, these sneakers may be somewhat attainable even in the aftermarket, although in my opinion no sneaker that costs $300 plus should be considered attainable in a general sense, you're definitely giving up some freedoms to buy those shoes, you know like food and water for a month. Anyways, now I was fortunate enough to finally get my pair through Adidas Canada, which by the way only got 800 pairs, whereas Adidas US and UK each got 20k plus pairs if I recall correctly, I forget the exact numbers, but it was a lot. How have we not reached over a thousand yet? Although I secured my pair, unfortunately I forgot to select express shipping when checking out, so my standardly shipped package will most likely show up later in the week if not next week. Adidas, why can't you just default it to express shipping when it's free after a certain amount? I know I'm blaming you for my simple mistake, but come on bruh, this could easily be avoided. Adidas Canada is the only Adidas site to offer non-premium shipping for premium priced products. It's like serving store-bought churros at a high-end Mexican joint. I don't even know if that's a thing. Okay, I'm just messing Adidas, I still love y'all, I'm sure the sneakers will get here in due time. But while that's happening, let's get this started. So this right here is my friend P who was able to cop her pair of zebras from the original drop. She's been rubbing it in my face since the initial drop. I wouldn't hear the end of her constant shit talking and late night texts hitting me up like, guess who's starting up a zoo? Not you motherfucker. She thought she was gonna run a lucrative business like the Toronto Zoo? Well guess what, I got my payback. I made her my foot slave for the day and forced her against her will to record this on foot just for you guys. Y'all welcome. So I know this isn't a pair from the restock, but from what I know, the restock is pretty much the same thing. The only difference is the production dates are different. So with that being said, let's get into the review. Now, as for sizing, honestly, she kept telling me what size she got, and I forgot if it was true to size or half a size up, but I believe these are a size five, which is her true size. She went true to size, and I myself would recommend going true to size in any V2 Yeezys as well. I went true to size in every one that I've bought and reviewed so far, and it always fits me perfectly, even with the insole in. The belugas were tight at first, but they broke in after one short wear. Obviously, I have yet to try the zebras, but I truly do not expect anything different when it comes to sizing. I do have a wide foot, so keep that in mind that I'm still going true to size. However, I do feel like there might be wider feet out there because I have heard from some that they absolutely have to go half a size up and can't go true to size no matter what as it would be too tight. I have also noticed that the amount of people that said that has decreased from when the Yeezy 350 Boost V2 first dropped in the Beluga colorway so maybe they didn't wait for the belugas to break in and so they've gone half a size up since. Although to be truly safe, it wouldn't hurt to go half a size up. I however still recommend true to size based on my experience, but you know your feet better than I do. That sounds kind of weird. So make your decision how you see fit. I also forgot to take some b-roll close up footage of the pair, so you'll have to bear watching P hop around and do her crip walk dance moves for the entire video. The upper of this sneaker is the familiar tough prime knit construction you see on every other Yeezy 350 V2 sneaker. I really like this compared to say the prime knit of an Ultra Boost and especially an NMD. The toughness of this prime knit means that my feet have slightly more protection from outside elements and impact versus the previous mentioned sneakers. Now while there are times where I would prefer the softness of the Ultra Boost or NMD as opposed to this, for example at a beach or a park, the fact that I know my feet will get more protection with these is a huge positive for me. Don't get me wrong, these are still a very soft shoe, it's not like it's uncomfortable or rigid or anything. There are soft suede patches on the inside of the shoe to keep your feet from directly rubbing against the prime knit as well. The upper is pretty much a white and black. 
The white being a little bit more of a light bone than a pure white, but that might just be an illusion due to the underlying black primate that fills the holes left by the cross-stitched white primate. Either way, it's a nice white. Who knew we'd get to the point of comparing different whites? Then we have the black stripes running along the upper, hence the sneaker getting the code name Zebra. The laces are pure white rope laces and are probably my favorite part of the shoe just because it contrasts so well against the striped upper. I don't think they'd pop as much if Adidas had released them with speckled rope laces the way they did with the Belugas. We then have a white stripe running across the lateral side of the shoe with the text SPLY 350 or Supply 350 or St. Pablo Loves You 350 running across it in a digitized print in red and mirrored on both sides. Then there's the late addition to the V2, an all white pull tab with red dots running across it horizontally. This pull tab was introduced on the bread colorway of the V2s as the Belugas and previous 350 V2s didn't have this feature. I personally like it a lot. It looked odd to many at first, but I think it fits perfectly with the shoe. It also helps you put the shoe on a tad bit quicker, so that's a good thing. We then have the whale sperm colored midsole. It's translucent, so you can see the boost through it, and it's probably my second favorite part of the shoe after the laces. I can't get over how clean the translucent white midsole looks on this shoe while giving a very sensual teaser to the boost encapsulated inside. Apart from that, it is the standard rib design midsole you see on all Yeezy 350 Boost V2s that have been released to this point. The rib design in general has been on every Yeezy sneaker with Boost so far. Who knows, maybe they'll change it in the future, but I doubt it'll happen anytime soon. It seems to be a very consistent design language of the sneaker. The outsole, as we've come to know, is this dirty piss yellow and has this Boost window that Yeezys are so famous for. I think this was a conscious decision. They knew the bottoms were gonna get dirty, so why not make them look like you stepped in a puddle of piss before you actually do it? P is wearing the Adidas Tiro pants with these sneakers. I described the rest of the outfit to you guys, but you guys can't really see it. So who really cares, to be honest? Yes, we messed around a bit with the Tiro pants to find the right tapering solution for them. So if you see the pants rolled up and set up in different ways during the video, that's why. So if you notice the pants being rolled up and set up in different ways during the video, that's why. Y'all might still have some questions about this sneaker, so let's get into them. Now, as I mentioned earlier, some people do find the appeal in owning sneakers only if they are very limited or exclusive. And with that being said, do I think this sneaker is a must-have? Personally, I do. I'm not a big fan of all-white sneakers, so when I saw the Cream Yeezys release, let's be honest, they're more white than cream. It just validated the appeal of the Zebras to me even more. Don't get me wrong, they're a nice pair of sneakers, but the Zebras are just exponentially better. This is a unique colorway of a sneaker that's already rather unique as it is. It'll go with almost anything, and I know I'm saying it's a unique colorway even though it's pretty much just black and white, but what's so special about it is it's not super loud because it doesn't have a bunch of very particular colors on it, yet you're still making a statement when you wear them because they're still noticeable. Let's put it this way, if I was given an ultimatum that I had to own only one pair of Yeezy 350 Boost, I could only wear one forever until it wore out, I gotta wear it for as long as it lasts, I would pick the Zebras out of all the pairs that are currently out and are speculated to come out in the near future. That's how nice these are. Of course, the Hypebeast lacing was on point from the start of the video. As far as comfort goes, we know these are super comfortable. I have given these near Ultra Boost level credentials when it comes to comfort in the past. You can definitely feel the boost more just because there is more boost to be felt, but the ankle area lacks the support which you get sufficiently in an Ultra Boost, so keep that in mind if that's a big deal to you. With that being said, that's the end of my review. If you took anything from it, please hit that like button. I'm curious to know what you guys think about these sneakers. Was the restock a good or a bad thing for the sneaker community? And please hit that sub button for more juicy content. Catch you later. Pixelated, out.